Thank you. Okay. So now we do have three people here on the uh, panel. Nick was going to be the facilitator, but his mic is... Uh, Technical difficulties. TDs. He's having some TDs. TDs, nah, not the other thing. Whoa. So, Sagittarius. Oh. Thing. Nah. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. so, we're going to start off this roundtable just by introducing um, everybody taking turns introducing themselves. We'll start with Shantastic and then go to Ashton and then uh, Sean. Um, awesome. Well, my name is Shannon. I, I go by Shantastic Shine. Um, usually co-host for all the other podcasts, and I am also an artist in spiritual guide, and I connect with um, not only spirit but angels as well, and I like to just kind of channel them and help others find their messages. Is there anything that you would that you are hoping for to come up during this panel? Um. I'm just trying to help um, others know what the different archangels' purpose is for um, helping us. Um, each of the different angels have different um, abilities or purposes, and I think it's important for people to know when to call on who during certain times of their lives and know that the angels are helping them. And so thank you very much. So uh, Ashton and Sean, both of you, if you want to include something specific that you would like to bring up during this, um, that would be great. So over to Ashton. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Ashton. I make music called Spaceship Earth. And I've been into spirituality for a while now. I, I have a really deep connection with the angels and the spiritual realm and... Um, humanity and our mission here. Um, something I'd really like to have be facilitated through this discussion would be just a deeper connection to the angelic realms for people and how to allow their blessings into your life. I think it's important. Great. Thank you, Ashton. Mm -hmm. So, Sean. Okay, hello. Thank you for having me. And I'm glad I can get the angels have helped uh, helped me get on on the uh, chat this time. And I, um, I now at present I am an artist and a teacher and a speaker. And I've um, been seeking all my life, and the angels have been uh, part of that, really, uh, you know, guides and helpers, and uh, so I would, yeah, I'm very happy, I'm, I'm sure, I'm hoping and I'm sure that uh, through this we can just uh, be sparks for the fire of the angels uh, on earth, so. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you for thank you for being here. We are very honored. I still think you should introduce yourself too. Okay, I will introduce myself. I am the facilitator for the roundtable. My name is uh, Christopher Clausen. I go by Silaman. Um, I grew up in a Christian family my entire life, so I did have um, knowledge in the areas of you know. The angels that were mentioned in the Bible, um, Gabriel, I know, was one of them, and Michael. Um, so since early on, I've had a, a relationship with God and the angels, and I've always, you know, spoken with them and communicated with them. And uh, so usually, usually I speak with Archangel Michael. I do talk to him quite often, and uh, one of the most... Um, profound moments that I've had with Michael was when I was in San Francisco near the end of 2012. And it was the first time that I actually, well, in a way, heard his voice uh, when it came through when it came through my own voice. Uh, I was talking, but it wasn't me. It was Archangel Michael, and he said that. And so that was, like, my first, like, really 
um, intense conversation that I that I had, and so I, I did want to take part in this roundtable because I feel like the archangels are very important to Earth, and they are here for a reason. And um, you know, there's a lot of people who are very interested in archangels, but haven't really, you know, gotten too in depth with that. And I feel like arch archangels or angels are more um, people are more open-minded to the angels than most other spiritual guides. So I feel like um, by uh, utilizing the angels, we can reach uh, a critical mass of the human population here on Earth, and sort of introduce um, some some of the more higher vibrational philosophies and way way ways of living. So. Um, that is me, and thank you all for being here. Thank you for everybody on the panel. I'm very excited. And so we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Um, so, sorry, Ashton said something? Um, nope. It's in the chat. Oh, okay. it said something in the chat. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll start with the, uh, one of the first questions that we have on here, and that is, uh, what is the main job or gift that these angels are coming with? And I'll ask that to everybody. We'll go in line of how we introduce ourselves. Um, what did you want to focus on? Any specific angel or just in general what the, what the angels are here to do for us? Or? Well, how about each, <coughs> each, each speaker can pick a specific um, archangel if they would like? Um, okay. Uh, one of the, the angels that I, I really resonate with, other than Michael, who I think um, kind of just helps protect everybody uh, personally, uh, one of my favorites is uh, Archangel Hanuel. And I feel like um, his or her purpose is uh, joy and fulfillment and um, motivation and strength. And um, Hanuel is one of, my, one of my favorite archangels because... I'm all personally about motivation and strength in others, and that's definitely an archangel I would want the the collective as a whole to connect with more and to call upon um, when they're feeling down or they just need some motivation or if they're not feeling that they're getting the support they need. So that that's definitely one angel uh, I would call upon, or that's what our her purpose is. And uh, just in general, other than specific angels. I, I feel like the angels' purpose in general is to protect us in many different ways and that they exist here in this realm and in the heavenly realms which gives them a very um, unique life or existence so to say because they're, they're touching our lives daily here in the physical realm but they sit next to the throne of God or the universal energy or whatever energy a person believes in, that's where their angels connect for them. And I think that's why angels have such a unique purpose because they can connect with almost any religion in some way or another and um, it gives them a lot of pull in the physical realm. And I think that's really their purpose is to bring all the different religions together in a sense of protection. Hmm. Oh, cool. Ashton? That was so good. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Um, in general, I feel like the angels and the archangels are helping us here on Earth um, is with the ascension, with bringing our planet to a higher vibration of love and unity. Um, they're really here to uplift the energy to help us remember our connection to spirit and our connection to source um, that we're not separate from the universe and we're all we can all create anything we want we're all beautiful souls uh, I mean a specific angel uh, I really connect with Archangel Raphael it's like um, very all about green energy green healing light and it's all about health and uh, remembering who you are and protection 
It's just uh, easy to connect with specific angel. Um, but just in general, the angels are here to provide us with doorways to allow our manifestations to accelerate as well. Um, through the help with help of angels, they can uh, help orchestrate um, things like that you wouldn't be able to possibly think of and then might have to take a left turn that you weren't expecting and then um, down the road things end up even better than you could have imagined. I think that's happened a lot with me. They're so fun. I love them. I don't know. <laughs> you definitely have lots of angels that surround you and help you. I've seen you work some miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the yeah, I liked both of your what you've been saying so far about the. And all three of you, this kind of universal work or mission activity of the angels, like kind of their expansiveness, like that, and that they bring that expansion to us, and <clears throat> really uh, kind of communicate that vast vision that they have um, as. I think of like the process of evolution of the universe and of humans. Uh, I believe that the angels are the kind of spiritual pressure that is acting on the material world, like moving it forward in this process and in the human world too. Um, and a, a particular one, I'd be kind of interested to know what you others think think there's one that you didn't mention who is uh, one of my special uh, maybe most connected archangel for me that I know as Sadiel. Um, I don't know if and I'd be interested to hear if you've heard of it or maybe it's another name or but Sadiel is the angel of um, all light seekers all people of all traditions, religions, non-religions who are seeking the light. Um, the, he's the angel of kind of inner adoration of the great mystery. So Sadiel is like some angels like take away veils but Sadiel almost like puts a veil out of this great reverence, um, like gives the inclination to just remain in adoration before the great mystery and also the mystery of others. So in our relationships with one another, um, Sadiel keeps us from being critical because we have such a reverence for the mystery of the other. Instead of pointing out faults, we try to cover them up because we see the holiness of the other. We don't want to tear away the veils, but we want to just sit there in this deep uh, adoration of the mystery. So uh, that's one of my special, I mean, I, I learned of him as an archangel, um, but I haven't seen him all the time in other lists, so maybe he has different names, but I don't know if that, if you recognize that one. Hmm. No, I've never heard of that one before. No. I've never heard of him as Zadiel, but it sounds a lot like Raziel. But Raziel kind of, um, it's known as the Archangel of Mysteries and Clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. And same time he puts up a veal, he also takes it down. And mm -hmm. uh, they say Raziel is also the angel that was spoke of in the Kabbalah and the Torah, in that he brings all the different religions together. So maybe oh. he goes by Raziel as well. But I've never heard of Zadiel, so that was really good information. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did want to read something that that uh, <laughs> Nick the Nick sent. He said the ascended masters, angels, archetypes are beings who embody a specific thought pattern, a specific life 
experience for them to have their own language of what is truth, of what is perfect. He says, to picture this. You have a computer problem. You seek a being who can fix computers. Then they could teach you how to fix and prevent the next problem. Angels and ascended masters can be utilized as help with their specific mode of operation. And then we can integrate those teachings and embody them in our own unique aspect. So that is from Nick. And the uh, next thing I want to get into is because I was quite curious about this. Uh, is there any difference between an archangel and an angel? So uh, start with Sean Kramer this time. Okay. Um, I don't, are you familiar with the early Christian writer Dionysius the Areopagite? No. You, I've heard of him. Yeah, he, he wrote a book called The Celestial Hierarchy about the angels. He's one of the main sources for a book just about angels that he wrote. They're not sure when he was. They think maybe he was a Syrian monk in the early centuries, uh, Christian, early Christian. Uh, but he said something interesting about archangels, that they're, um, the word is made of arche and angel, angelos in Greek. Angelos means messenger, the messengers, and arche means first or principle or beginning, like archetypes. So he said that their name is has those two parts. And there he put them above the angels, but below all the other above the choir of angels, but below the other higher angel spirits. And he said the word angel referred to the ones below them and arche was all the ones above them the RK being the first principles of the universe. And the archangels were me mediators between the lower angels that are more moving among us, like our guardian angels, and all these higher, more vast spiritual principles. Um, so he saw them as different than just the angels, but that they are um, kind of the beings who really mediate for us between these really higher ex um, beings that are almost too much for us to handle. They're like the spiritual transformer stations to kind of shift that electricity to a level that we can handle. Sweet. That was a great explanation. Uh, does anybody have anything to add to that, Ashton? Or? Um, can you repeat the original question one more time? Yeah, it was what is uh, the difference between an archangel and an, and an angel? Um, okay. Um, if you think about the like the color spectrum and how each color has a different vibratory range or bandwidth, it's um, the yeah I, I've always felt or had this intuition that the archangels are just that next step above. Just it's not necessarily better or worse. It's not. Uh, it's just higher vibratory information and yeah I think they're the direct messengers yeah it's okay mm -hmm. did you have something you wanted to add? yeah uh, I'll, I'm kind of just adding to what they both said um, like Ashton said I don't necessarily know if they're considered higher but I think they're a different group um, we always hate the stereotype people and um, things, but in general, the, the angels kind of have stereotypes because um, I've read several books, and, and one of them I'm holding, which is probably one of my favorites, 
called the Angel Bible. But um, when it describes the different levels of angels, it had, um, I think there were like six or seven levels. But like the first level was the seraphim, which was kind of like the god or god's security team. They sung, they sung next to him, they surrounded him, and they protected him. And then he had um, the cherubim, which was... The, the ones who play, or the, the angels who play out parts. And then there were the archangels who were kind of like his board, or his disciples, that went and did as he said. <clears throat> and there's there's actually a lot of different archangels, because um, it's kind of like guardian angels got promotions, and that's where we got more. But the original there were originally um, like seven main archangels, which represented each ray of light, like Ashton was mentioning on frequencies, and each one had a color representation, and when people saw certain colors, they, they resonated with certain angels. And then there's guardian angels who are given specifically to each person, like their imaginary best friend that's not really imaginary. It's actually the guardian angel that God gives each person to walk through them with on their path of life that helps them with their destiny. So instead of it being like a rank that they're high or anything, it's more just like their job classification is they help God fulfill things. Like Michael is the protector, Ariel gives courage, Hanuel is a motivator. Um, I forget the one that Sean just said, but he keeps the mystery, and Raphael is a healer. Like they just have specific jobs, and that's what they do. And the guardian angels walk with each person, and the seraphim guard God, and kind of how I see the archangels play out. Hmm. Yeah, that's really beautiful information for sure. All right, so... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a really good question after that one. That was a lot of really yeah. good information. Could, could I add something to what Shantastic said? Yes. Um, yeah, I like that I, that qualification about the higher and lower, because that was in the older writings. They thought they described the hierarchies as levels, more like kind of a ladder. Um, but then, when when I've looked into what they mean by that, because there's it's a, it's a spatial metaphor. They're not really like up, down, in different places or on top of each other. Um, but one explanation was that um, some just have different kinds of vision, so that some see um, more synthetically. So as if 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 we could see this moment that we're in. And, and while we saw this moment, we saw the whole of our past that led up to it and all the past that we're going to lead from it. And not as divided like through time, but we saw it all together in this moment. We just saw it intuitively. Then that would be a kind of a, a more synthetic vision. And that... Um, so some of these older writers, they said what they were trying to describe was that the, they were saying that the angels, these kind of groupings or choirs of angels, were actually different kinds of vision that they have, different ways that they grasp things and intuit things, and that that was what actually distinguished them and that they um, can help us to... Well, that's one thing they can do to us is share each of them their particular vision, kind of like a a new um, download or a new um, kind of perspective for our our minds, and that the different angels have different ones. So that was one way. So that um, I think that's a good qualification. That not really to think of it as like better or worse, but uh, just different perspectives that they have and that they can share with us. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so I would like to get into specific angels, and I would like uh, each each speaker to choose uh, one or two specific angels that they would like to talk about. 
And I know, uh, Ashton, you said you connect really well with Archangel Raphael. Yeah. Uh, can you please explain how you connect with Archangel Raphael and uh, describe a little bit of what it feels like and uh, what, you, what you get from it. Okay. Um, kind of, he, like, made his way into my life, for sure. Kind of, like, seek, seek, me, out, seek me out. I don't know the word. But I was in Mount Shasta in 2010, and I was just walking down the street, and there was a man giving uh, oracle card readings, and his name was Angel. And he had this Archangel Raphael Doran Virtue oracle card reading deck. So that was the deck that he gave me the reading with, and it was like the most powerful, like super divine, super accurate reading I ever had in my life. It changed my life for like two or three years. And after that experience, I got that um, same oracle card deck and started working with the cards and inviting them into my life, like when I would go on a drive or um, if I wanted to generate any prosperity or healing in my life or if someone got sick, I would always send him. And... It's this very gentle, easily connectable energy. Um, I remember once I was at a festival, a music festival, and I stayed up all night long. And I was walking by myself and after the sunrise came, and there was a little healing stand, and it just said Raphael. So I was like, oh, like cool, I'm going to go to that. And it turns out that they had a bunch of um, sage and crystals and this like thing you could put your legs in and hang upside down and they had a bunch of healing sprays and um, they did meditations and stuff but I was talking and but the card was green so I thought it was really interesting so I started asking questions and it turns out on the back of the card it was all the whole company was founded on Archangel Raphael's teachings and but they didn't like put it in people's faces it was just like in the background, like, oh, all of our teachings come from an archangel. And I just, I felt like in such divine order and it really like confirmed to me that the archangels and the angels are very real and his energy is very uh, real here on earth and is spreading and uh, it's very easy to distinguish him because it's like green light generally. Yep. <laughs> Sean Kramer, did you want to jump in there? Um, okay, so to pick one angel or just how how we work with the angels? Um, yeah, I'd like to learn a little bit more about uh, one or two specific angels that you work with most closely. Okay. Um, I, I can, well, I... Um, Sometimes I see uh, Michael and Gabriel um, related in a certain way, and I try to um, see them as ones that can help me with um, Michael as um, kind of the inner current of our essence. And then Gabriel as the angel of our radiation, like the word. Gabriel is often associated with words and communication, mm -hmm. um, but more generally with our all forms of radiation that go out from us. Um, but the radiation... Um, depends on our inner current of our being, our essence. Um, and I um, feel like Michael has that kind of foundational work of building up our current of life and protecting that. And Gabriel as um, helping and enlightening every all the ways we radiate out through not only words, but thoughts um, and uh, all kinds of communication. Um, 
so those are that's those are two that I see working together that way, and I I uh, um, see them as ones we can call on for those two uh, kind of complementary uh, help and activity. Mm -hmm. Great. So Shane test shine. All right. Come on, um, it shine. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have a, a, a little bit of a personal story that I, I wanted to share. But um, that being said, the, the way I connect with angels a lot is I I, I speak with them very uh, very frequently. Sometimes not necessarily that loud, maybe more so in my head. But um, to have conversation with them, it makes them really active in in life in general. And I, I sometimes I ask them to give me certain signs or people or different things to just show their existence and they, they usually don't let me down. They've helped me with many things and the, um, the personal story I really wanted to share was about um, Michael, Gabrielle, and Raphael and uh, it's actually um, kind of funny because I have two of them with me now. <laughs> um, a, couple, <laughs> a couple months ago my, uh, my grandma was really sick and I was begging the archangels and angels and all that there was to to give me some sort of sign that they existed in in the physical realm, and it was kind of a um, a really uniquely lonely but surrounded by people kind of experience because I had a lot going on. But um, I put out a really strong call for them, and they all kind of showed up right for me within a couple of weeks in person. Um, it's funny because Ashton just spoke of Raphael and in so many senses he was my, my physical Raphael and um, CeeLo was Michael and Skywalker or uh, well yeah everyone knows him as Skywalker he was he was kinda of Gabrielle and it's funny how they appeared because um, I needed someone that made me feel safe and protected and um, CeeLo appeared and he started talking and telling me how he connected with Archangel Michael, who is the uh, the protector and um, kind of like the leader of the crew. And at the time, he kind of seemed like that to me. And um, Sean just explained how Gabri uh, Gabriel is the the angel of messengers and messages and different things like that. In Skywalker at that time, he, he was the one who talked the most. And <laughs> <laughs> he, he talked the most and he he talked me through it. Um, they came right towards the end of everything that was happening. My, my grandma has since passed, but what I was asking the angels for was to, to show me that it was okay, that I was going to get through it, in that they had her, pretty much, and that they had me. And what happened was I ended up disappearing with them. They pretty much, the angels flew me away and I had a kind of like a retreat to get my brain together and kind of realize everything was going to be all good. And then the angels not only did that, but um, Gabriel showed himself to me in dreams and was like, These are, this is a message for you, it's happening and everything's good. And then like, Sometimes Skywalker would just appear and he would send me a message and it would like almost confirm it and it was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then um, a little while after it happened, I was kind of falling into a depression. I was like, man, I really just, I just need something to lift me up. And then um, right at that call, Ashton, you came and you played music in my house and you, you channeled Raphael so fluently and just like raised that vibration in ways you don't even know. <laughs> And like that's just how I really connect with the angels. Where you guys like manifested for them into my world, and then Project Bring Me to Life's come, and I really like that um, you mentioned was it Zachiel, Sean? Z Z how do I say well, it? I call him Sadiel. Sadiel. I like that you mentioned him because um, you you joined us. So did Sarah and several other awesome angel connections and. Just by like opening that connection to the point that I wanted the angels to physically manifest, you guys are slowly manifesting each in your own way, and I feel like each person resonates with a piece of that. And that's one of the main reasons I really wanted to have the Archangels Roundtable, was mm -hmm. to show that each person does resonate an angel in some way. 
But that's how I connect with them. They manifest for me. <laughs> Great. Wow. Great. Did you have something that you wanted to add, Sean? Look like you might want to. Um, I well, that's that's very inspiring. Thank you. I I'm really like um, inspired by hearing that, and uh, you know, encouraged. And that idea of the I really think that's a deep idea of the angels uh, manifesting to us and for us through other people. Um, I. Um, I think that's great because you know we can look. I mean, there's a lot of ways, like you said, our dreams or things, but actually that other people um, can be the angels. So, thank you. And oh, um, there, he was asking about I, I, yeah, that was I said it Sadiel S A D I E L. So that was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, moving on, I would like each person to answer this as well. Um, so just imagine for a second, somebody has come up to you and started asking you about angels, and you're telling them about angels, and then they ask the question, how do I connect with these angels? So uh, each each one, just go through the process of how you can connect with any or one of these uh, archangels. And... Uh, Start with Shantastic. Um, I think that if you just call upon them, call them by name, and if you don't know the name, call them by angel and the purpose that you need for them. Um, angels, I need protection, or angels, I need love, or acceptance, or something like that, and they'll come. Um, I know a specific angel is Hanuel. She enjoys being contacted through moonlight, and she resonates with the moon a lot, so... Um, it's said that if you make altars in moonlight, it brings this Hanuel into your home. And um, she was the one I said she's very um, motivating and inspiring. And I think that part of the, the moonlight thing, at least in my head, it, it repre represents her bringing light into the darkness. So that's just how I contact them, as I just call them. Ashton. Yay! Um... Bam. I like that. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> For me personally, um, I feel like if you want to communicate with them, it's good to get into your heart center, into your um, physical heart, bring your attention and focus right into your heart chakra, and then speak through there. Um, if you have desires or wishes, um, just uh, stating your gratitude for them helping you get into your heart space and generally your uh, clairaudient ability, your ability to hear um, messages through receiving them through your mind are a little easier if you're in that high vibratory heart space area. And for me, the number one way they communicate with me is through my external environment, through triple-digit number patterns called angel numbers. Um, this could be the main angel number is 444. If you see fours, the angels are definitely surrounding you. 404, 424, 444. It's a really good one if you've been seeing that a lot. That's the angels connecting with you on um, a physical plane manifesting in your life. Um, it can be any number, any triple digit number combination it could be them, but generally it's the repeating like 111, 1, 222, 333, 555, 888, 1111. Um, 11, 11. Uh, there's a lot of numbers like that. Uh, angels can come to you in your dreams, guiding you. Um, you can see them as clouds. I, I notice that a lot. Just driving around or looking outside, they see angel wings. Um, they'll communicate with you by leaving feathers on the path that you're walking, which is always one of my favorites. Um, surprises, gifts, uh, they can... A lot of times you'll be asking for help and nothing will manifest, but you'll have had uh, received an idea that you need to take action on. Uh, that's really important. A lot of times, what the angels have really taught me is how that I have all the answers and I already know how to take care of and manifest everything for myself, really, and they're just, like, on my team, and they're, like, 
my cheerleaders, and they're really awesome. Although they still do help uh, manifest things for me, but yeah, uh, just call out for them, like Shannon said. It's that simple, generally. Just like it's, it's like the more you believe in them, the more it can come true, and the more you just simply allow your cares and your problems to. Um, a lot of people have a hard time receiving, I think. So it's good to get into your own belief patterns about receiving what is possible. And um, I think it's also important to realize that uh, they are you. And the, the deepest sense of the meaning, uh, there's no separation between you and them. We're all part of uh, the one being of light or God, I believe, and the angels are a multi-dimensional aspect that's an individuated consciousness that's uh, bonded to you in every way, and it's just like talking to your higher self. It's you, and they uh, love you. They don't judge you. They're non-judgmental. <laughs> they can also bi-locate. So they're multi-dimensional beings of light that can bi-locate, which means they can be everywhere at once. So um, especially, say, like Archangel Michael, he's, like, with everyone all the time. How is that possible? Because uh, his soul is so expansive that he can bi-locate, which is uh, like being in two places at once at least. It's like that movie where once they gain so much knowledge, they just turn into the frequency and they're everywhere. It's like half the movies that are coming out now. But Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I just saw a movie that did that exact same thing. Yeah, so did we. <laughs> we saw Lucy. So did I. just watched the movie, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Ashton, I did, want, I did want to say that Katie, Katie actually jumped, jumped in the chat for a second. So... Oh, he's nice. Yes, what up, what up? So, Sean, did you want to go ahead and answer the question? Um, all right. I think um, I get one One of the ways I connect with the angels, I think it's very much, uh, I think, something that Ashton seemed to be talking about. And the way I think of it is, as a, a inner alignment, like creating a certain inner alignment with an angel. So as if uh, trying to face in the same direction as the angel and kind of fuse our vision together, looking in the same direction. Um, so, so I call it like this inner alignment with the angels. So, the I feel like the angels really want to share our human experience that we have, mm -hmm. and to let us share their experience. So, we can like do something for them by saying, "Come into me," and learn what it's like to see and touch and taste and then let me feel what it's like for you, your experience. Um, so that's a way uh, I like to connect with them. Hmm. Yeah. And we do have about 13 minutes left until the end of the hour and I wanted to get more of a um, of what you wanted to talk about, Sean, before you had to leave. Um, so I, I just wanted to ask you, you, I know you do a lot of paintings, you paint a lot of angels. Um, do you feel like painting an angel, uh, painting one of the archangels, will help you connect with them uh, more deeply? Uh, yes, I do. I feel like the we as humans are very much beings of images and the angels are more like 
uh, pure light, like Ashton was saying, these multi-dimensional light beings. And in doing a painting, um, I I feel like as artists that we do and we can with the angels kind of mingle the image with the angelic light. And I do try to open to the angels. I feel like the one of the th things that the angels uh, do and want to communicate to us is images that uh, are leading us to our further evolution because we don't see clearly our further, our next step. Just like when we're children, we don't really know what it's like to be an adolescent or to be an adult. But we can get images of it that help us kind of direct our propulsion forward. And I feel like the angels want to give us those images that will be catalysts for our further evolution. So in, um, in art, by working with the angels, uh, I feel like we can be um, co-workers with them in bringing these kind of images of evolution and transformation into the world. Mm. Is there something you want to say? Just like that he was, he was talking about how we're visual people um, because uh, I was going to say I forgot that I, I use card readings a lot to connect with the angels and um, that's I, I connect not necessarily through the picture of just them, but what's in the, the picture with them, like what they're holding or they're surrounded by. And I, I yeah. feel like <clears throat> they're giving me, like highlighting specific things in the picture that they want that message to go. And I think we're very much visual beings. That's why we decide to stay in, in the physical realm instead of being just a frequency. Um, we, we want to see things. We want the experience of seeing things happen. And seeing the paintings that you've created is very beautiful. Um, I definitely urge anyone that hasn't had a chance yet or might have missed your podcast to check out your page because Sean Kramer's got some awesome angelic visuals. Yeah, uh, he, we actually used his paintings for the promo picture of this of this run too. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I was actually I, I liked the question because I was actually just talking about how I wanted to make a series of archangel paintings that um, where the angel represented the the people I see. Mm. resonate as most often. So I think it's a really neat idea. Yeah. So do you want to go a little bit more in depth about your thoughts on, uh, on uh, specific angels resonating more with specific people? Um, like is there a, like do you think it's um, like these people have incarnated from the soul of this archangel, or is it something else? I, I think we are all frequencies, and um, part of the reason we feel so connected to certain people are because we're part of them, we're part of their song, we're part of whatever vibration it is that they put out and have been putting out for uh, generations or many reincarnations, so that we are connecting with them on so many levels, and that's why we're able to connect globally rather than just in our, our town like um, S Samantha who um, was supposed to be with us tonight and I'm kind of bummed that she didn't get to join us but um, she's been resonating a lot with Archangel Ariel and I can totally see that in her. She screams courageous and she has so many natural abilities and is very um, she's very elemental and uh, things like that and uh, when the whole event was happening with my grandma, I remember Skywalker said, you you remind me of Ariel, and I was like, nah, I'm not Ariel, but I feel like she's like a distant sister, and like connecting with Samantha and seeing her resonate, like Ariel and different things like that, um, it makes me see like how different people really like grasp that energy, and, I, and like I said, I feel like the angels can like almost like take over our bodies, it's like not just us channeling it, but like they use us as tools to play out the divine plan that um, the universe has for us. So mm -hmm. I think that many of us can be many angels at many times. Thank uh, you. Fine. Thank you. I'm going to, I have to, I'm being thrown out <laughs> right now. So. Oh, well, Thank we you. love you. 
Yeah, <laughs> thank you for thank joining you. us, Sean. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hope to have you again soon. Have a great night. Art. It's so good. Hi. Hi. All right. Well, thank you, Sean Kramer. Um, yeah. He's uh, definitely an amazing guy, and he's just he's his energy is just so like loving and. I think he left this open. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I did want to say that um, you know, Sean Kramer, he just has like this, uh, just like this aura of love. He's an angel. That that's why he, um, Zat Zadkio was that Zadio? He said Sadio. Sadio. Uh, he brought us, an, uh, I feel like a new angel to resonate with yeah. because he he I has that, that kind of. Everything you talked about it was so, uh, what I needed in my life right now too. Yeah, and I'm really I'm really glad that he was able to be with us. So, um, that's awesome. Definitely. Ashton, did you want to uh, answer the question that I asked uh, Shane Tesla? What was the question again? Um, do you feel like uh, s uh, what do you think the reason is for pe specific people resonating more with specific uh, archangels? Oh yeah, and like, do they incarnate as humans? Yes. Or like. Um... Just flow with it. Tell us something else. Um, yeah, uh, um, specific reasons angels connect with specific people um, is generally the kind of help they need, I feel like. Um, I used to kind of just see everything in a general sense, like the angels, um, which is uh, very much how it is still. It seems like a very group consciousness kind of thing. Um, but why would be like... Um, Kind of like when you're at a hospital and you need like a specialty doctor. Um, every archangel has a specialty, so it would really just be relative to what you need and how many angels you want to interact with, because I think they all are universal angels and they all want to interact with you and they're all aspects of you. Um, I think that's uh, very important to realize that every angel is an aspect of your higher consciousness and is, like I said, just part of your soul, part of you in the most intimate way. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Hmm. No, that's beautiful. I think uh, also someone, well, Matt Kahn once said that Earth is like an angel academy, so we're also working to be these multi-dimensional beings of light and love and unity and harmony and bliss and the messengers of God and all of that. Uh, that's something very much what is happening on Earth right at this moment is that everyone is an angel, really. Totally. I think certain beings on Earth are uh, have incarnated before in the angelic realms come here now as straight up angels. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're just we're all angels, and you guys are angels. <laughs> yeah, I just saw what Nick Nick <laughs> said. Nick Mendley, he said that uh, Sean Kramer's <laughs> like the Dumbledore, the, the, the real Dumbledore. Oh my uh, gosh! And we do have Samantha. Samantha! <laughs> I was just talking about how awesome you are. Oh, what? I came in at the right time. <laughs> how are you guys? Good. Good. Oh, shit, I haven't seen you in forever. I know. Well, you're here to tell about how awesome this haircut is. <laughs> I was just saying, yeah, his haircut. And Shannon, your hair color is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, back to the... Back yes, sorry guys. Hi. <laughs> hey. No, so uh, since we do have you on now, Samantha, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Okay. Um. Well, I'm Samantha, and um, I don't know what am I supposed to say about myself. <laughs> how do you resonate with the angels, and how do you talk to them? Okay. Yeah. Um, I definitely feel very close to the angels. Um, I actually just really found out um, that, well, I've seen lights for a really long time, 
like yeah. up in like the daytime sky, sparkles like everywhere. And I always kind of wondered what it was. And sure enough, angel lights. So I feel them very strongly. And mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah, so so working on becoming much closer with the angels. Um, now that I know that they are so strong around me. Mm -hmm. And is there an angel in specific that you would like to talk about? That we haven't already talked about? I don't even know where we're at in this. <laughs> um, what, what, just what angel in general do you Sorry. resonate the strongest with? Yeah, um, definitely I feel like Archangel Raphael is a very strong one in my life for a lot of different reasons, um, both with myself and my family. Um, I think that I didn't really realize it so much, but he's been a really huge presence over the last several years in my life. And um, so definitely, definitely have a close, close relationship with him. Um, and he also happens to be my birth angel, so. A birth angel? What is a birth yeah. angel? Um, so, like, depending on the day of the week that you're born, there's a different angel that's, like, assigned to oversee that specific day. Hmm. Hmm. How did you come to find this out? Google. <laughs> Master of everything. Yes. Cool, cool. <laughs> she, yeah, she said Google. <laughs> that's funny. Um... <laughs> So how do how do you go about how do you go about connecting with the uh, angels? What is your technique? Uh, meditation, um, I think, is definitely what I use the most. Um, pretty much just yeah, you know, just get in my quiet place and kind of um, just call them in, open my heart space, and and um, let it go from there. Can you explain the, the feeling that you get uh, as you're calling them in? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, um, you definitely notice a shift in, like, the energy. Um, you know, for instance, like, sometimes, like, if I'm super upset, which has been happening more frequently lately, you know, like, I'll, I'll call them in and, and just, like, an immediate calm sort of comes over. Um, and depending on, on, like, which angel it is, some of them have a very, like, warm presence. Some of them have a more, um, you know, gentle, calming sort of presence. Mm -hmm. um, Raphael's definitely very warm. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you agree with that, Ashton? Super fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> Cuddly. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to get into the next question here. And for Samantha, um, we've already gotten into uh, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Sadiel, Zadkiel. Any... Uh, I talked about Hanuel a little bit. And Hanuel. Um, so the next question is going to be. Uh, is there any other angels, um, important angels? Sorry, you, you're pointing. I was just going to say something you're done. Yeah, you're fine. You can go ahead. I would like to hear what Samantha has to say about Ariel, because right before she got in here, I was talking about how I felt like you resonate with her really well. Yeah, so that's, that's like the one I was just going to bring up. <laughs> explanation of her. Yeah. Her um, so we're just kind of just talking about, in general, yeah, we're just blowing. Okay, doc. Um, sorry, guys. I've never been like a part of something like this, so I'm like, <laughs> it's all I'm good. Here, so I was just watching. Okay. We're happy to be your um, first. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. So Archangel Ariel, um, she is the archangel of nature. She plays a huge role in the environment and um, taking care of all the animals and the plants and the fairies and elves and all those fun little creatures <laughs> that um, 
inhabit different parts of the world. Um, she's a huge angel for um, courage, bravery, if you need confidence. She's a good one to call upon for that. Um, she's also a master manifester, which makes sense. Um, her connection, you know, with the fairies. They're also amazing at manifesting um, and very helpful with that. And um, she is also known as the Lioness of God. Mm -hmm. So very connected with lions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys yeah. can... <laughs> Yeah, I was just, I wanted to say while you were mentioning, um, I've, I've painted Ariel a few times, and that's also an angel that I resonate with a lot, and I think my sister, Erica, does too. She does. Because um, I've, I've painted, I tried to paint my sister, but it turned out to look like Ariel with uh, red hair and very pale skin. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there to, to add to what you said. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, any other important angels that uh, you want to mention, Ashton? Um, yeah. I was going to bring up Archangel Metatron. He's always been very prevalent in my life. Uh, he's Archangel of Geometry and Math and Science. He was um, the first human to turn into an Archangel as the story goes. Um, he's also a good angel for beginners. Um, he helps accelerate the speed of things, which is always nice. If I'm ever like late or like I'm bored and want something to hurry up, I'll call him on. I'm like, like alter the time and like help me get there on time or like help me get there faster or like maybe like if I'm stuck in traffic, which sounds kind of like boring and small, but um, generally I get like lots of green lights and traffic flow is really awesome for me and I get parking spots all the time. Um, Archangel Might or Metatron is just powerful overall and uh, helps you get in touch with sacred geometry and like the Metatron's cube and flower of life and golden spiral He's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were talking about uh, Archangel Metatron, and for some reason in my mind, I started to think about Archangel, how do you say it, Melchizedek? Melchizedek. 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 I think that's how you say it. Something like that. It, um, it kind of like, every time I see it, I just think about Nick Melnicki's name, because the last name, like the, the M name is so similar. But um, yeah, I don't really know much about Melchizedek, but if anybody does, I'd like to know about that. But um, did you want to talk about? Yeah, I wanted to add to what Ashton was saying about Metatron. Um, Metatron works strongly with the shapes and different things, but he was one of two angels to, or yeah, two angels that were originally humans, and he has a soul brother that like broke off from his soul. And became Sandalf Sandalfon, or yeah, Archangel Sandalfon, or something similar to that. Does that make sense? And um, yeah. um, <laughs> they had like a spirit relationship, and one was Enoch, which was Metatron, and then Sandalfon was Elijah, and they work together really closely when when they do things. And I think it's funny that you mentioned Metatron because Sandalfon, his brother, is actually the Archangel of Music, and he connects with us through. Um, music, when you hear that same song over and over, that message is usually him. And when you see shapes over and over, it's usually Metatron. So they, they work together in the visual audio sense. And um, Sam was just mentioning how she sees lights, and Metatron's known really well for seeing uh, flashes of lights, which could also be why he's able to change the lights to green so quickly for Ashton. Um, but he, and uh, together they, they work with changing thoughts in visuals to more positive. Um, as a team, uh, Metatron will usually distract a person in with a flash of light and then replace a negative thought with a more a positive thought. 
and while he's doing that, Sandalphon will play some sort of sound or music to distract them from the negativity, and it turns their their whole perspective to a more positive outlook. So they, they work together as a team, and they connect the most with people on a, a people sense rather than a protector sense because they once were people, and they, they know what it's like to to go through a, a physical lifetime. So I, I wanted to definitely give him a shout-out. And a couple others that we, we didn't mention that I, I'm really fond of are uh, Uriel, which is God's light and brings us light, and uh, Jophiel, which is beauty, and... Jophiel. Yes. Shout Jophiel. out to Jophiel. Jophiel is one of my favorites. Love you. She does. She helps with self, self-admiration self and uh, beautiful thoughts. And then <laughs> uh, Jeremy L., which is hopes and dreams, which is also another good one. Mm-hmm. But those are a couple that we missed that I wanted to make sure they got shout-outs mm-hmm. to. Yeah. Self-admiration. That's supposed to be. Oh, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Self-admiration. You know, because we're all one. We're all one. Okay. You guys are me and I'm you. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. Oh, I miss you guys. And Sammy, I'm glad that you got to join us. I was worried that we weren't going to have you. Oh, I know. I was so surprised. Um, traffic wasn't too bad at all. So I'm starting to think maybe Metatron was with me. <laughs> yeah, I was calling him for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. Raphael is really good for traffic, too. and like mm-hmm. Travel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Travel, exactly. Safe travel. Indeed. Mm-hmm. That's the word. So we're just uh, about to start wrapping up this roundtable here. And um, at the very end, we're actually we're still going to do our our cosmic energy forecast, and so um, we'll still have that. But um, was somebody saying something while I was talking? You must ask you a question, Sydney. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just, uh, each speaker will go in turn and uh, give your closing statement. If there's anything that you have wanted to say, haven't had the chance, now would be the chance. Give your closing statement, and then uh, after that we'll do our mustache. Yeah. All right. So, Ashton, we'll start with you. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> right? Where's that on you? <laughs> um, my closing statement is that every person is an angel, and you have angel wings, and you can wrap those ring- wings around yourself, and it will raise your energy and vibration and your state of health. And your wings are really big and awesome and unique to you. And I was, like, wrapping my wings around people when I hug them. Um, or just, like, sometimes I'll just imagine I'm, like, r- like touching my wing on someone's face, like, as I walk by, just to, like, bless them, which is, like, fun. I don't know. It's fun for me and non-invasive. <laughs> um, yeah, you're an angel and you rock. Mm-hmm. Bam. <laughs> I love it. Samantha. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to say, even though it was short and sweet, um, thank you guys so much for having me on. And even though I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, I will go back and watch the rest of the podcast. But I want to thank you for all of your input and all of the amazing information that I know I'm going to learn from it. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And um, thank you to all of the angels and archangels for always guiding us. And um, yeah. That's Great. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I just want to say thank you guys for all being a part of it. Um, I really wanted to do a podcast on the Archangels because I felt like they they deserve some much needed recognition and um, we we do a lot of angel readings but I felt like we, we deserve to do a, a full podcast about them and, and I couldn't have asked for um, a better panel. Uh, there were a couple people I wish could have made it but I understand that they had other things to do. Um, but you guys are awesome. The angels are grateful that we spoke about them and shared their purpose and story. 
Yeah, as you're saying that, I'm just like feeling, feeling like a million hugs by all the angels right now. Yeah, it's really warm. It's been it's been really warm and our heat's down, so <laughs> the angels have been flowing through. And I'm I'm just really grateful to be able to share my my stories and um, experiences and how I connect with them to other people because I, I feel like sharing those stories is so important because that's how other people will learn how to connect with them and be more open to connecting with them. And if anyone has any questions and they're watching this, my email is always open and um, I'm sure anyone that's part of the panels is open pretty frequently so that you can ask us more. And I'm excited to hear what the world has to say about them. Yeah. And so are they. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actually planning on doing one round table a month. Um, just because I think it's really important to have panel discussions to get you know different perspectives on one on the one subject. Yeah, while we're still on the subject, can I ask you a question about the archangels? Can do you want to save it for the mustache? Mm, I can, but it's about this topic. I mean, you, whatever you want to do. Well, you were supposed to be a part of the panel, and I think it's important that we get your input. Um, when you you told me about the, the angels and the their divine. Selves, you, you often speak of a, a council of 13. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about this while we're still in the angel discussion? Yeah. So I, I do often mention the council of 13, as I like to call it. And basically what it is is I work specifically with 13 archangels um, for our mission here on Earth. And... Basically, the 13 uses this body here, um, you know, this C. Lamont character as a, as the conduit for for our mission as, you know, an entity made up of 13, you know, individual archangels. Um, it's hard for me to explain because I haven't really learned that much myself except the basics. And I have seen this with my own vision. Um, when I was in Hawaii, I was I was living under a bridge for three days, and I was I was limited in my water and my food. And um, those three days, I really didn't eat, and I didn't have hardly any water at all. And uh, while I was under there, I had this dream where I was actually well, you know, dream, astral projection. Uh, whatever you want to call it. But I, I was in this circle of, of hooded figures, and it was 13 hooded figures, and I was, and I was one of them. And in, in front of us, in the center of the circle, was this big giant hologram of Earth. And in the, in, um, on the Earth, there were specific areas that were being lit up with these red rings that were kind of like, like pulsing in different areas of Earth, and those were areas that we all were focusing on in, in areas that needed our, our attention. Um, so, and I, I didn't really realize this until you mentioned it, but uh, Shantasic said, um, you know, Jesus had 12 disciples, so Jesus plus 12 disciples is 13. Yeah. And that kind of was like, whoa, I didn't even even realize that. But 13 is, is a magic number for me, and... Um, and I will say that Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Raphael, uh, Jophiel, Ariel, um, they're all on this council. And some of the others, their their names kind of come and go within my own mind, but right now I, I'm not, I don't feel encouraged to say any other names for that. I feel like the ones that you mentioned are kind of like the the head council or the, the right hands. Um, it, it's also... It makes me it makes me wonder because then maybe each of the disciples that came to Jesus in this realm were then an archangel at some point too, and they just don't mention it as uh, equally as they do with Enoch and Elijah becoming archangels. Mm -hmm. But it, it would make sense that um, God would send His Son with His main boss crew mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to Earth to try to change things. So when you when you yeah, told me that, that's a good idea. <laughs> it's what I, what I felt was the, the 12 disciples and Jesus who's supposed to represent each person so whoever and then their majestic 12 mm -hmm. but I just wanted you to share that because it was important cool thank you 
<laughs> so we, we can do the mustache segment now. Um, I don't know if you guys wanted to put mustaches on. We haven't been doing it lately just because it's been... Uh, I'm doing it this time. Mine works. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to do it too. Which means I'm going to end up with it. I'm going to do it. I mean, I already got a mustache. It's only fair if you have one too. Uh. So everybody get your questions ready. Um, I would like it if you could only ask your question to one person so that... Uh, we don't drag this on too long. All right. All right. So, um, Samantha, we'll start it off with you. Okay. Let's go with CeeLo. Yes. And if you were an archangel, what would be your gift? Hmm. That's a really good question. Jeez. If I was an archangel, what would be my gift? I uh, would say um, self-empowerment. Just uh, I would bang on my staff and open up a portal for any who call upon me and allow me to sort of open up a, a space where they can feel like they can be themselves without any sort of fear and uh, just be unique and be weird and and not have to worry about if I do this, is somebody going to look at me like I'm crazy? Um, Self-empowerment, yeah, for sure. Love it. <laughs> okay, so I think since you asked me, I will ask somebody else. So I will say, I must ask you a question, Ashton. All right. So, Ashton, what... Could you please... Describe for us a moment in which you felt the most connected with one of the archangels. Most connected to one of the archangels. Um, I once was in a meditation and... and started to realize that there was an angel by my side leading me to these higher and higher dimensions and each scene would be a certain level and every level that I would go to the angel would still be there and it was like the angels are like walking us up this stairway to heaven um, <laughs> but as I started to like like ascend out of my like earth and like the universe there is these uh, realms of light that we went into and I just felt so like there was like no negativity there and all the light um, was everything and it was information and knowledge and it was love and it was bliss and it was uh, everything that's good and it was very obvious to me that the angels were there guiding us the whole way. And for me, that was just a little meditation. And it really like solidified that like we were uh, the angels uh, as well. <laughs> yes, that reminds me of Stardust. Okay. Your turn, Ashley. Oh, um, okay. Let me think of a question. Love uh, your <laughs> Thanks. I like it, too. I picked it up at the store. It was like $3.99. <laughs> That's cool. Um, for, all right. I must ask, must ask uh, Shannon a question. Um, what got you into reading angel oracle card decks compared to other decks? Like, what was it about the angels that made it such an enriching experience? Nice. Ooh, I like that. Um, I feel like angel cards... Oh, got my mustache. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I 
I feel like angel cards are really important because it helps um, those of all religions, of, in a sense, connect with cards. Um, I was having a hard time connecting with a lot of, um, uh, well, Christians or very um, spiritual-based people that don't like normal tarot cards. And it, it, it seems like, uh, especially like people who believe in uh, the Bible and things like that, they're willing to connect more with the angel cards because right. there are angels in the Bible and the angels do give us messages. And mm -hmm. I, I strongly connect with the angels in general. And it, it just seems less scary for people. Um, they don't realize that uh, cards are pretty much the spreads create from a law of attraction. And uh, angels are very... Um, they, they, they communicate a lot easier than people would think and we just have to be willing to answer it and by doing angel readings they're almost so e like easy so to say because the angels want to share their message where other guides it takes them a little bit longer I think it has to do with um, kinda like uh, Sean was explaining earlier where the different angels and different beings resonate on different frequencies but the archangels they want to communicate with us you just have to open it so when you do an Archangel card reading, then it's just so open and they're able to share their message with everybody and everybody's usually willing to hear it. I haven't met, um, I haven't really met anyone that said, oh, I don't believe in angels because that'd, that'd be pretty crazy. Um, they believe in them in some sort of sense or another. <laughs> so. Yeah, they look good with the message. Oh, man, I'm, oh, not, I'm not a fan of this message. Get off me. <laughs> Get to ask them. Awesome. Uh, Samantha, I must ask you a question. If you could be best friends with any archangel, which archangel would you be friends with? Oh, without Ooh. a doubt, Ariel. <laughs> yes, we'd go riding around on lions and like... Yes. <laughs> the fairies and all the little forest critters. Like, yeah, absolutely. Totally. Oh, I can see that happening for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I think that wraps up the uh, the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into the s cosmic energy forecast, I wanted to personally thank Ashton, Nick Melnicki, and Samantha, and Sean Kramer, and Sean Kramer, and uh, everybody who is watching this. So thank you all. We love you. And we'll see you on Thursday with Liz Cox. We still have... Oh, no, I think so that. <laughs>